let's uh, let's pray let's just come this time into god's hand <clears throat> father we thank you for this uh, for this day we thank you for this time lord lord even as we um, been learning about life skills and uh, about communication and how to be effective communicators lord i pray that uh, even as you called each one of us lord to communicate the gospel and to communicate the truth lord i pray that what we learn lord will be useful and uh, it will be used for um, Lord, for the extension of your kingdom, Father God. And I just pray that uh, each one of us, Lord, will be able to sharpen our skills a little more and uh, find out what needs to be done and carry that out in our own lives, Father God, so that we can uh, do things effectively and for your glory, um, that we will understand people uh, a little more uh, better, Lord, with all the skills that we, uh, that we are upgrading ourselves with, Lord. We thank you. And we, we ask that you would teach us, that you would show us, Lord. And Spirit of God, Lord, even as you, Lord, uh, imparted so many different skills, Lord, right? We, uh, as we see in Scripture, God, um, we pray that you will impart the skill as well to us. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Okay. So last class, we looked at interpersonal communication and uh, we looked at several aspects of communication right so um, can anybody share what what is it maybe each person can so, share about what is it that you took away you know from last class what is that uh, that you remembered and what is the learning that you took away from last class Um, anyone? Um, anything specifically related to communication that <clears throat> that you took away? Uh, Arthur Stephen here. Yeah, go ahead. It's, yeah. it's just one point, like how uh, poor communication affects uh, relationship. You know. Uh, so just, just that one yeah 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 so how poor communication um, uh, results in breakdown of you know uh, relationship right relationship yeah, yeah. be it yeah. Uh, official or personal you know? right right cases <clears throat> yeah so so very true and so very significant because um, uh, you know uh, since it affects relationship um, uh, lack of communication or poor communication you know which destroys that so so yeah so the importance of good communication yes very true anyone else yes different kinds of uh, communication skills and also principle of communication hmm. and so listening also one part of that when someone is to speak to be listening yeah yes. yeah yeah so we saw that communication is two ways uh, it's not just one person downloading or dumping you know what i know or what i'm saying you know just uh, dumping that it's it's actually two ways so um, so the other person is listening uh, taking time to receive whatever is, is being communicated um, and also you know the the other the person who's communicating or sharing information also taking time to listen to the other person in order to understand uh, better you know what is the person asking and uh, what is the person saying so that we understand and the next sharing of information would be even better because you understood what the need of the other person was and understood the query and so you're able to you know satisfy that right with our communication with the sharing of information so yeah so we looked at it as two ways and also the importance of listening like Karen said um, and today, we, in fact, we're going to look at uh, a, a lot more, spend some more time on listening and why listening is important and how to be an effective listener and some of the barriers, right, um, which come in the way of listening effectively. <clears throat> yeah. Um, anyone else? Anyone else? Maybe just one more person. Mm, what was your takeaway? from last class <clears throat> yeah. 
Anyone else? Okay. Okay, so what did you learn about verbal and non-verbal communication? You know, anyone, do you remember that? We looked at verbal communication and we also looked at what is, you know, not spoken, but it's you, at the same time, you are still communicating. So any anything on that that you remember? Verbal, non-verbal, anyone? Kanan, Sid, Thomas, Dave? Anything that you recall about verbal and non-verbal communication, the importance of that? Okay. Verbal is using the means of speech. Yes, what you speak, what you, um, uh, yeah, that's true. And what about non-verbal? Is non-verbal communication um, is it effective? Non-verbal includes facial expression, body language, etc. Yes, non-verbal is more like actions. Yes, that's true. So we realize that um, yeah, an expression, right? So we realize that you know if our verbal communication and our <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, verbal is not in sync with the non-verbal. Then, uh, or you know, in other words, like if I say something, but my facial expression or my gesture um, is not in line with that, right? I'm saying something which is very, very. Uh, I'm giving a message, maybe like an invitation or something, but my body language, my facial expression is not friendly enough or um, you know, it's it's giving a certain, it's a different message altogether. Then there is a mismatch, right? I'm saying welcome, but uh, my body language is different. You know, I'm not, it's not welcoming. You know, I'm like saying uh, welcome. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, probably crossed my hands and uh, my the tone of my voice, um, there is no smile on my face, then even if I say, welcome, yes, I'm so glad that you are here, you know, it it conveys a different meaning altogether, right? The message, uh, even though the words are welcome, we're glad you're here, but the non-verbal message that is going out is, is something else, something different. And many times, non-verbal speaks louder. Right, and uh, so we need to um, to be effective communicators. We need to ensure that. Hey, I'm not saying that you need to be, uh, you know, be an actor and you know do all those things, but um, but really uh, to make sure that our verbal and non-verbal you know go hand in hand, <clears throat> and it's authentic, it's real. Really mean it from your heart, right? Okay. So okay, so we looked at all all that uh, last class, and I just want to encourage you to you know go through your notes also. You know, once you finish the class, maybe during the week, it's just one week, once a week, right? So you can just go through the notes, and that will help you to kind of reinforce whatever we learned in class. Okay. Uh, of course, now the videos are also available, so you can go through that. Okay. So today we're going to look at listening skills or listening ability. Okay, so um, the ability to receive information, um, understand information, you know, comprehend it, and uh, and and do that well. Okay, so um, listening skill. Now, if I don't listen effectively, then I cannot communicate effectively. It affects my communication. Why? Because here I'm down downloading some information upon you and I've not taken time to understand what your actual need is right so maybe it it could be a, it, it could be in different scenarios it could be in a counseling scenario it could be uh, it could be a professional setting where you're you're with a client or with a customer uh, it could be a ministry setting where you're you know, listening to the needs of a person, um, you know, maybe as a pastor or as a 
as a leader or it could be um, uh, you know a, 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 a leadership setting like uh, maybe you're a team leader or you know and and you're not listening effectively listening actively and that is causing certain uh, blocks in communication okay so um, so first off uh let's uh, try to understand so what is the difference between hearing and listening okay um anyone okay i'll just put it in the chat here hearing versus listening is there a difference are there similarities um what do you think hearing and listening what is hearing what is listening anyone what does it mean to hear can all of you hear me i hope yeah. so yeah so so okay they so hearing is to be able to know the sensation of sound okay so hearing is is more mechanical it's uh, okay it's a auditory function where uh, if your organ of hearing is functioning properly you're able to hear the sound that is being made right you're able to hear the speech everything so um you're able to receive that information but listening <clears throat> is a little different because we hear and we also making some effort in order to understand what is being said in order to comprehend what is being said so that would be a key differentiator between uh, you know uh, hearing and listening so listening would involve us focusing on whoever is speaking right we're not turning away because uh, if you, if it's just hearing we can just turn away and walk around uh, i can just hearing the sound yeah it's loud it's soft and so on but we are focusing on the on the, on the one who's the speaker and we are, we are concentrating and we're putting in some effort in order to understand make sense of what is the message that is being said you are paying attention and your in in doing so we are receiving a lot of information right we are the the non verbal cues we are receiving and the, the emotion of how uh, what is being conveyed that is also something that we are receiving right so so uh listening is a very active process it, it's very active it involves effort uh that is why you know listening can be tiring okay um so you're listening you're because you're putting in a lot of effort you're focusing you're using your your mind your you know understanding what is being said so it it can be you know tiring right and that is why you know maybe even after classes right uh, three class three hours and uh, you feel a little tired okay you want to you know take a stretch and take a break and so on so it's because, because it takes effort um you're using up energy in order to listen so uh it takes focus it takes concentration and you do that it's a very active process and therefore um this phrase active listening is used in order to describe the process of effective listening you know active listening where you're involved in um receiving that information okay so uh, you know there's a lot of research and and people say that um, and and if you if you're following in your notes you're looking at page 22 and you can see that uh, you can see that uh, that the diagram which is there um, so it talks about how uh, 45% is spent listening compared to 30% of speaking right so uh, we spend um, uh, while as adults we spend 70% of our time in 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 engaging in some sort of communication uh, 45% of it is spent listening compared to 30% speaking 16% reading and 9% writing 
okay so so which means that it is it is a lot it's quite a bit that we are using um, in communication and we need to do it well okay so why is it important why is uh, listening important okay we know that it aids communication but specifically why is um, uh, listening important okay so let's look at that uh, some aspects of it okay um, well it is important because we can avoid distractions and when we listen in a focused manner we avoid distractions to receiving the message right there could be other things happening and uh, there could be uh, other preconceived notions in our own mind right about the person about the message but we we can put all that aside when we and receive the the, the message uh, uh, in an effective manner <laughs> excuse me um so to get an accurate understanding so that's the thing you know, to put away distractions to get an ac accurate understanding of what is the person what is the speaker conveying what are the views of the speaker what are the ideas of the speaker okay that will happen only when we listen effectively when we actively listen okay um, and also to critically assess what is being said so so you okay you're saying um Okay, this person is saying something now i i need to analyze it okay i need to assess it <laughs> excuse me um just give me a minute so sorry about that <clears throat> So uh, let's say a person is saying something, and you want to analyze the content of what is being said. Now I cannot do that unless I listen effectively. Okay, just think about it. You know, you want to discern, you want to analyze, you want to come to your conclusion about that. But you'll be able to do that only when we, um, you know, listen effectively. Okay, um, and also to observe the non-verbal signals. You know, the person might be saying something, but we might miss out. We might misanalyze something. Okay, and make our own judgments. Let's say an interview. Okay, so you're, you're the person who's 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 interviewing the person, and if you're not an effective listener, and if you're not, um, uh, you know, looking out for those verbal cues and what is being said and how is the pers person, um, what is the person's body language, what is the person gesture? If you're not, if we are not, you know, receiving all that and not actively listening. Then I might come to certain conclusions about that person, right, uh, which might be wrong, and which might actually the de my decision whether to hire someone, whether to not hire someone, will be an impaired decision in the sense it's affected by my ineffective listening, right. So, um, so you see the importance of it, right? I, I might come to a decision uh, as a leader. I might come to a decision as someone who's, uh, you know, as uh, who's someone in a leadership position who's, you know, who's interviewing someone. Uh, the the other side is also true. You know, maybe I am being interviewed, and the person is asking me something, and I might not answer effectively i'm not be able to give this a, a correct answer if i did not listen you know i maybe i heard the first line and then i was trying to figure out what to answer and i missed out the rest of the question right and i begin to just so i my the answer that i give will not be full and satisfactory to the person who's asking me the question so that's that's also true so you see all this uh, is linked to effective listening okay so so and, and a few others as well so so the thing is this that uh, effective listening requires focus requires concentration requires us uh, effort from our sides uh, from our side okay from um it is not the same as hearing which can be a little passive but it's a very active um, uh, effort okay so let's look at um, uh, some principles of listening Okay, so we are, let's say, if I want to upskill or, you know, make my listening a little better, I need to know what are some principles. Okay, now, a good listener will listen 
to not only what is being said, but also what is left unsaid or what is partially said. Okay. So what is not being said, I need to understand that also. Um, for example, uh, look at the body language, look at some uh, nonverbal messages, and uh, and and then you know you what are some expressions, right? Uh, if suppose somebody is uh, saying or sharing a message which is a happy message, but the tone is very sad. You know, like we were looking at the example, like, you know, you, you ask someone how they are doing and they're saying, uh, I'm doing great. But but really their tone suggests that they are not doing so great. But the words are say, words are like, I'm doing great. And especially, you know, if they have texted that message, you will think that they're doing great, right? Suppose they sent a text or an SMS or uh, or WhatsApp message and they say, I'm doing great, you would have thought, okay, this person is doing great. But maybe when you're speaking to them face to face, they are saying they are doing great, but their tone indicates that they are actually sad. They are not enthusiastic. They are actually sad. So so <clears throat> all this, uh, it's it um, helps us. So let's look at some uh, let's look at some pointers or some principles of effective listening. Okay, something to help us to be effective listeners. Okay, the first thing is listen. Okay, so first thing is to listen. Uh, listen uh, in a focused manner and don't interrupt with your own talking. Okay, um, so that's uh, that's something. You know, we uh, sometimes we. You know, in a in a you know, we do, we mean it in a sincere way. You know, let's say for example, we ask somebody something, and then they they are answering, and uh, you know they are searching for words, and you complete the sentence. You know, sometimes we do that, right? So we're waiting, and then we get a little impatient, and they're saying, you know, you know, this is the answer to, and then you finish that, you know, to that question. Right. Or this is the way to go to you know you finish you know you finish that sentence you know. yeah, so that is uh, you know that is not effective listening right uh, which means we need to be patient we need to let the person speak and not really interrupt okay so uh, sometimes we we the person is speaking and they have not really finished responding fully right they have not even finished the sentence but we we come across and we we say you know our own our own thoughts okay uh, you know but actually you know this is what happened or something like that which means that we have not been listening right we have been thinking about what can i say next and we say that right so um, so which means that we need to listen we need to stop interrupting uh, with our thoughts, our ideas, and let the other person speak. You know, Mark Twain's um, com, uh, uh, quote is very, uh, you know, it's really significant. It's really uh, brings that out. You know, he's saying, if we were supposed to talk more than we listen, we would have two tongues and one ear. The Bible also talks about that, right? In, in the James chapter one, we see that. Um, the, uh, I think the reference is. Uh, let me read that verse. Um, okay, James 1 and verse 19. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Be quick to hear. And that word hear there, uh, used there, means to, to actually understand, uh, to, to comprehend, okay, which is listening. Right. So slow, uh, uh, slow to speak, slow to wrath, but quick to listen. Right? Okay. So how can I prepare? Okay. Second thing is to first thing we saw. Okay. Don't interrupt. Um, don't uh, share, share your own. Don't complete the sentences for the person. Let the person speak. Okay. <laughs> the second thing is prepare to listen, which means you relax. Like sometimes we can be distracted by other things, put all those distractions away. 
you make up your mind okay i'm going to listen to this person now okay make up your mind and say okay uh, all distracting thoughts all interrupting thoughts i'm going to put it away i'm not going to think about those things i'll deal with it later but here's this person in front of me and i'm going to give my full attention and so so you you uh, make up your mind to listen okay so there will be other interrupt interruptions like okay maybe your phone ringing maybe you need to put your phone on silent maybe you need to you know uh, switch off those not notifications maybe you need to maybe you know turn your phone and put it face down right so you don't see what's coming up on the screen right? sometimes we need to do those things right the other thing is to make the other person feel free you know? don't intimidate that person um encourage that person to speak you know uh, and sometimes what would help is when we look at the person when we nod our heads the person says uh, you know today i just thought i should share with you some difficulties that i'm going through and we can not say yes yeah just tell me right so so the person feels encouraged to share right so suppose that person says you know i just felt that i want to talk about some difficulties and then you're looking at your phone um yeah yeah tell me uh, what were you saying and the person knows that you're not interested right yes even you you saying okay yes, just tell me indicate to the person that you're not giving them that importance right and sometimes we do that with family <laughs> right uh, most times we do it for them either we're talking to our spouse or you talk to the kids and and you know you're just doing this yeah tell me yeah what do you want uh, and and you know that uh, you know, that is not that is not helping so they are you're sending the <clears throat> non verbal message that whatever you're saying it's not that important right the, the work that i'm doing the texting that i'm doing now that is important important than what you have to tell me so we learn to put this away you know this is of course it is important work and etc but then when we have these conversations right put this away and say okay now i'm going to give full attention okay uh, look into their eyes okay? and and so that they know that okay this person is attentive and wants to uh, speak okay maybe um, you know you need to put away certain things like if you're in an office situation you know there could be there could be loose paper there could be stuff you know so don't don't start arranging those things as you're speaking like putting those things away you know arranging books arranging things um you know, just focus on the person okay what happens is you know pe different people speak at a different rate of speech right some people might speak very rapidly and get their views across some people might take their time and it might be very um, you might find it very impatient especially if you're a person who's used to you know, doing things and and you're like when will this person finish right the person is taking their own time and they're saying and there's a long pause and uh, you know they i just thought i should tell you and and you're, you know just waiting oh man so if you start you know like on the table if you're doing that uh, that means that you're impatient right you're giving out the message you know if you're drumming on the table with your fingers uh, or if you're looking here and there and you're looking outside the window uh, or you're shaking your leg uh, you know fidgeting with something and you're doing that and then you know you know that the person you're sending out a message that uh, you know you're getting distracted or you're looking behind that person's back, you know you're behind that person um so don't do that right uh, if if a person is slow to speak or maybe if they are pausing uh, we need to give them that time you know sometimes I, uh, i i think i'm guilty of that you know i try to finish their sentence uh, and um, so but i'm i'm just learning to be a good listener right i'm just sometimes i finish their sentence and i'm i'm impatient i'm trying to help them like with uh with the ideas with thoughts and uh, that's not really helping actually it's distracting them from what they want to share and uh, sometimes they get influenced by that and say things that they don't want to say also right so we are not uh, being good listeners and we're not getting the actual truth the actual message of what that person wants to convey 
Okay. So, um, so yeah. So these are some things that to look out for. Avoid personal prejudice uh, because of a person's uh, the way, whatever they are dressing, maybe their mannerism. Um, you know, and don't come to certain conclusions. Oh, people with long hair, you know, they are like this. Or people with you know uh, piercings body piercings people with tattoos they are like this you know, don't let that influence you don't bring your personal prejudice and influence you so that that shuts down whatever they are trying to say right um, so let it not distract you listen to the tone a very important you know you're hearing a message what is the tone of their voice okay is it um, is it a happy tone? Are they excited? Are they not excited? Are they sad? Are they agitated, fearful? Right? All that is conveyed in the tone of their voice. Right? Right. For example, if I'm if I'm using this kind of tone, uh, like you hear my voice, and I'm 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 saying, you know, I'm really excited about what is happening right now. That's a very excited tone. But if, at the same time, if I say, you know, I'm I'm really excited about what is happening. Uh, that's not a very excited tone, you know. That's that's like low on energy and and so on. So, what is the tone? Like, uh, is that person agitated, angry, um, uh, or is the tone really conveying, you know, uh, what the message is? So, uh, observe the tone, listen to the tone, right? Uh, so. Uh, uh, you understand, okay, what is that person saying? What is the emphasis of what is being said? Right? All that comes from the tone, okay? Then the other thing is to listen for ideas and not just the whole, not just the words, okay? So what is that, okay? Um, because when people, uh, now this is very subjective, of course. Um, you know, people are, Conveying certain informations, in, some information is being conveyed, but it is uh, in bits and pieces, right? It's in bits and pieces, maybe because the person is agitated, maybe the person is angry. They're, they're conveying something, and in the words, you're not getting the full picture, right? In the words that they're saying, you know, that's they're, they're not conveying through words, they're not being articulate. But we who are listening um, will be able to put it together based on the tone, based on their uh, their expressions, and the words that they are using. So that would help us get the full picture, right? Um, and of course, their verbal, uh, I mean, their gestures and, and facial expressions and everything, uh, eye movements also, you know, would help. The clear picture. Okay. Now, um, the, now there is something called the Huria uh, or Huria model of listening. Okay. Now, each um, this was uh, developed by someone in Cornell University, Judy Brownell. Uh, it's it's um, helpful to remember and to to understand. So uh, let's let's just look at that. You know, H U R I E R. Each letter, uh, it's an acronym. So each letter talks about something. Something. So the first one, H, is hearing. Okay. So um, it refers to the physical act of hearing. Okay. So uh, make sure that you're hearing everything. You're picking up uh, everything um, uh, on what the word is uh, on the what words are being said, and also other things. Right. You understand okay understand what is heard okay maybe there are some things that are being said that you don't understand you know make an at attempt to understand uh r stands for remembering okay sometimes what happens is uh, the person starts to say something and you've forgotten you know uh, this happens typically uh you know when a person gives too much information um maybe about uh, an introduction or about themselves and you uh, i'm sure you you had that experience where at the end of that particular line you've forgotten what um, maybe it's an introduction about themselves you've forgotten the name of the person right because you your mind drifted off and you looked at um, and you were thinking about what the person said what the person was doing and you forgot the name of the person 
and uh, you had to go back and uh, you know ask them again so i'm sorry uh, what did you say your name was right um which is just good we could do that but the thing is that your main mind trailed off and you forgot to actually remember the name of the person right so uh, r stands for remember i uh, is interpreting okay interpreting based on what the tone and everything interpret the message uh, e is evaluate <clears throat> okay evaluate what is being interpreted don't jump to conclusions about what is being said interpret it correctly and uh, e uh, is evaluate and r is respond okay so our response helps in communication like where you can clarify okay maybe a person says something and um, our response to that could be to ask a question in order to clarify what is being said so you're saying that um, let me just understand a little better so you're saying that you know is this what you're saying right you're saying that you will meet me at this place at 10 o'clock right so the person says no 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 i didn't say that i said you know i'll give you a call at 10 o'clock so you've clarified um, based on your response okay so h u r i e r a uh, hurrier model is um, is easy uh, uh, and to do this right so um so that is that is what we see. So there are some barriers to effective communication. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, let me just uh, look at it. Just give me a second, one second. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, one of the barriers is, of course, um, you know, being distracted. Uh, we looked at it earlier, but it's something that we need to uh, work on consciously. Being distracted by the person, being distracted by maybe what the person is, uh, you know, person said by their mannerisms. So we forget or we lose out on what the person is saying, you know. Um, so one of the things is to put that aside. Okay, maybe you notice it initially itself that the person has some kind of a distracting mannerism. Okay, um, maybe in the way he or she repeats certain words. Like for example, somebody might say, uh, "You know, you know, you know," you know, after every sentence. Or um, this is what they say, like, or you know, they use the word "like" or "you know," which can be distracting. You know, they're saying, you know, my, uh, you know, I went there and, uh, you know, I did this, you know, I, and, and you find that so maybe irritating that we miss out on what is being said, right? So to be an effective listener is to put away all these distracting uh, mannerisms of people um, that would really help us, right? Okay. And also, um, uh, uh, the other thing is also about the rate of speech. Okay, rate of speech. Some people speak very fast, um, especially if they're excited, and uh, and some people take their time to speak to communicate. Right. Uh, so uh, they might take a long, long time to finish a sentence. So especially during such times, it's we can drift off. Right? We can drift off. We can we, are, we start thinking about certain things. What you need to do, maybe after this, uh, etc. And then suddenly you realize that, oh, I didn't pay attention to anything that was said, and now I have to respond, right? And I think in today's day and time, when we have these Zoom meetings, when we have these online things, you know, that's the danger, right? <laughs> okay, so this. Uh, Saying I can relate to that, yeah. If the person is speaking slow, and uh, you know, uh, yeah, and also, you know, when it comes to online meetings, like uh, you know, maybe it's a Zoom thing, a Zoom call, something, and then uh, you know that the person can't, uh, you know, you've got other screens open, and you thought, okay, let this meeting happen. I'll finish this. Right? I'll finish this person. I'll finish this email, and you're very uh, happily you're doing that, 
and suddenly somebody asks you a question <laughs> right and uh, and your response is um, yeah can you just ask that question again can you just repeat that question i didn't get that but the fact is that you didn't get anything that was said right uh, and you completely you're in the dark okay so distractions uh, these are things that can be barriers rate of speech etc is a barrier okay um, okay um, the other thing is um, um, what can be a barrier is our own body language okay so what can be a barrier to listening is our own body language in the sense we can easily show or tell the person that we are not interested because of our body language right um, because uh, uh, our body language could be very, very defensive. You know, you're closed, or you're you're like that, or you're turning your face away because you're not interested. Even though you're saying, uh, yeah, yeah, tell me something, but you're you're not even looking at that person. So that will be a barrier to the person to communicate further. Right? So that again becomes a uh, barrier. Right. So our body language becomes a barrier for the person to open up and share and uh, you know clearly for people who are in ministry if you're in a you know let's say uh, your pastoral role or a counseling uh, role um, it's it's so so important for us to learn to be effective listeners okay um, and uh, you know I don't know if it's a if it's a if it's a case with men, but really uh, you you want to solve right um, as a person, somebody sharing information, you want to solve that problem, and the minute they start sharing, you're thinking of you know solutions one two three. You know, this is what the person should do, but we are not really listening to what they are saying. Okay. Uh, we're not really empathizing what they're saying. We're trying to solve so much. Uh, we're thinking of solutions that we're not really listening. And we are, you know, and and the solutions can be great, or the solutions can be a complete mismatch because we've not listened to the whole um, uh, whole problem, what is being conveyed. Right? We're not listen to that. So, whatever we are suggesting, you know, can be a mismatch. And it can be as serious as that. Whatever advice you're giving, whatever solution you're putting forth, we are putting forth, can be a mismatch to that because we have not listened fully, we have not listened actively. Okay, so um, so uh, so I just want to ask you, you know, how many of you think there that you are good listeners? You know, this is something that I need to work on. Uh, you know, personally for me, uh, listening is something that I really need, really need to work on, because I can, you know, my mind sometimes wanders. I'm thinking of solutions, all those things. Um, so, what about you? On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate yourself as a listener? You know, one is very poor, ten is very good. Okay, seven. Okay, even. I just need your score. How would you rate yourself on a scale of one to ten uh, as a listener? Thomas eight. Okay. Kiran five. Kanan five point five. <laughs> Where is the point five coming from? Okay. Aaron is six. Dave is seven. Uh, five maybe. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So all of us, uh, I think we um, we need to work on this area because many times we we think of communication as only speaking, right? And I, I told you that example of how in a group discussion uh, for this for this management course, um, since it was it was part of a admission process that everybody wanted to convey something and make themselves uh, to be heard and. Um, so that the people will take notice of what they had to say. And so everybody was speaking, nobody was listening, right? Uh, nobody was listening to the other person. They just, just going bang, bang. And uh, and that can happen. And if, um, 
you know, it, it's a serious thing, you know, really, because it can come across as something that is very, very rude. See, I, I think all of us, we will deal with people right, at some point or the other. Uh, we will we deal with people and uh, we will be um, leading people, you know, if we are not doing that already. Um, if we are not effective listeners, we will be seen as people who are rude. Though, though, though that is not the intention, you know, we will be seen as people who are rude because we are not actually giving people importance to listen. Right? We will be seen as people who are uh, not that effective, really. You know, uh, we'll be seen as people that uh, who who don't have uh, the capacity to maybe analyze things fully. Uh, we'll be seen as people who who do not understand problems fully, right? Um, so uh, that's another thing. That's another danger if we are not listening fully, um, if listening effectively. We'll be seen as people who are, uh, uh, you know, who don't have that capacity maybe even to solve because we're not listening, right? Uh, so apart from the fact that, okay, seen as rude, you know, you know, seen as people who don't have the capability to do some things. Um, and, and over a period of time, what will happen is that people will stop sharing information, right? You ask and people, because people will think, you know, what's the point anyway? You know, he's, he's not going to listen to what I have to say. He's just, he's just going to share his own thoughts, his own ideas. He's going to interrupt me. So might as well, you know, not share it. He, over a period of time, you know, that will happen. And you don't want that to happen. Right? You want feedback from people. You want people to share. Um, you want people to, uh, you know, to communicate. You don't want a breakdown in the professional relationship. You don't want a breakdown in, the, you know, like a, in a family uh, kind of relationship. You don't want a breakdown of that. Right. So, so the importance of uh, listening skills. So uh, maybe this week, you know, you can take time to uh, to try that out. Okay, how can I listen without? Uh, getting distracted by the per person's appearance, person's mannerism, person's usage of language, etc. How can I listen without interrupting them frequently with my own thoughts, my own ideas? And how to listen to them fully till they are finished, till they are done? Okay, so uh, not being impatient. Okay, so, so let's try it out. Let's try that out. Okay, so we'll we'll go one notch and better our scores, right? Uh, seven can go to eight to nine, five can go to seven maybe. So uh, and keep moving in that direction, right? Okay, so we'll stop here and uh, get back next class. So all the best and for your effective listening. Okay, you take care. Right. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you, doctor. Bye.